Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Shawan, and joining me today is a very special guest. Her name is Sharice Ennis. Sharice is a sales funnel strategist and designer for coaches and experts. Through her done for you marketing service, she has helped hundreds of clients streamline their marketing into automated systems that sell on autopilot. Today, I'm so excited because we are going to dive into automation and specifically how to create more time freedom with evergreen sales funnels, the key to scaling your business without burnout. So please help me welcome Sharice to the channel. Sharice, it is such a pleasure to have you here on the channel today with us. I'm so excited to dive into what I believe is one of your favorite topics, and I am going to let you kick us off with sharing a little bit about yourself and what has led you to get to where you are today. Yes, well, thank you. First, thank you for, for having me. And I'm really excited to talk about um, sales funnels because I think oftentimes when you hear people talking about them, if you've even heard the phrase at all, um, a lot of times it's about like, figure amounts and dollars amounts, but I think that sales funnels are a great way to help you avoid burnout and create efficiency in your business and scalability in your business, which I think is just as important about as, you know, how do we make more money or, or reach certain financial um, milestones. But um, I'm a sales funnel strategist and I guess designer, builder, architect, however you want to say it. I know people have, call it all sorts of different things, but I refer to myself um, as a sales funnel strategist, and I work specifically with coaches and premium service providers to build um, low maintenance marketing systems that help them um, increase their increase their revenue, increase their time freedom, and bring efficiency um, to their business. And the way that I got to this, well, first off, <clears throat> I graduated um, back in 2011 with a degree in advertising and marketing communications. And, um, so this was an interesting time where like online courses were still kind of new and, um, online marketing was still, I think in this big like evolution as well. And my first, my very first job out of, out of college, I was working, um, at a, at a big company and they, um, specialize in HVAC systems and, and energy management. And I was working on a digital course. I was helping instructional designers. And I remember back then my boss saying to me, oh yeah, like online courses are going to be the way of the future. And here we are, <laughs> everyone's selling online courses. And I remember back then thinking, you know, really, I don't, I don't know, mm. but, um, but here we are. And so fast forward, um, years later, I, as I, you know, I, I did that. I worked in that role and, um, you know, I knew I, I realized that the corporate life wasn't for me. And so mm -hmm. I decided to dip my toe into the, into the online space. Um, I first, when I first started, I was working specifically with health coaches and, um, mm -hmm. I was just working as like a marketing virtual assistant. And over the years, what I found is, you know, in terms of like the requests that I was getting, um, a lot of them had to do with around um, marketing automation. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I realized that this was a really important piece. A lot of um, coaches were, uh, you know, especially if you're in the creative field or if you're in the health and wellness field, they're learning from other coaches or business consultants and they'll tell them, oh yeah, you need a, a, a sales funnel or you need like marketing automation, but they weren't getting this actual hands-on support to do it, to get it done. And agencies are great. And there are agencies that will do that. Um, but a lot of the times these big agencies, um, they're just out of touch with what's going on in the online space. And so I realized that there was a big gap between um, the strategy piece and then like the hands-on someone to get in the trenches with you and get it done piece. And so that was the gap that I realized I enjoy filling and helping for people because i I feel and I've seen it that the results really are in the implementation and getting stuff done and getting it out there. Um, and so, yeah, that's how that's that's a bit of my my story of how I got to to where I am today. And now we focus specifically on on evergreen um, building evergreen sales funnels, because I feel like that is an important asset to creating 
scalability in your business. And it's one of those foundational pieces that a lot of us, myself included, um, skip when we're just like, I need to get this business off the ground. We're kind of building the plane as we're flying. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes it gets overlooked. So I, it's one of my favorite places and areas to help people because I feel like it makes such a huge impact and ability to be able to just have more freedom financially and in your schedule and time. Really, really good. I want to dive in more to the automation side and seeing that gap. And as you mentioned, um, working with health coaches and um, them being coached by coaches as well and, and that need for having a sales funnel. And let's dive into a little bit of the benefits of the automation side when it comes to having a sales funnel. What does that mean for a business owner to have automation. Yeah. So I think initially when we hear the word automate, we think like that it's going to be like robotic and really stiff. Mm -hmm. um, and especially if you're like not very tech savvy or we all have different relationships with tech and how we feel about tech. Um, it might feel like, you know, kind of strange to be like, you know, how's, how is marketing automation like critical to my business growth? But the reality is, especially when you're in that solopreneur phase, that phase where you're doing most of the work, automation mm -hmm. helps to free up your time and your mental space because without having to hire on a team member. So marketing automation um, looks like email, like email, sending out a series or sequence of emails, sending out your, your newsletter without you having to be the one who's like manually pushing send. Um, social media posting, having it autom automatically post onto social media, but specifically too in your sales process, um, this also can look like people having access to your scheduler. So like they fill out an inquiry form, they then get access to your scheduler and then another series of emails shoots off. Like that's also a way that your sales process can be, can be automated. And it really does free up your time because you're not manually sitting there doing all of these little pieces that you know, maybe they take 10 minutes, but oftentimes when we get in there and we have to do them manually, which should take 10 minutes, takes an hour somehow, we get sidetracked <laughs> and we're all over the place. Um, and then also like even with the admin and um, onboarding side too, and offboarding side, um, you know, being able to send that welcome email with your instructions mm -hmm. and setting expectations. But I think the other piece that often gets overlooked is that, yes, automation does this for us. But what we have to do in order to use the automation is get organized and streamlined. And I think that's also like the other hidden piece to it that makes this automation so effective is because in order to create more efficiency in your business and to in order to also be able to um hire out or hire team members or even delegate at some point, um, you've got to get organized mm -hmm. and create processes around the things that you're doing. Even when the work is still custom, it's still important to have processes. And I think a lot of times we're just, fly, you know, a lot of us, when we're just getting started, we're just flying by the seat of our pants um, and then things get started and things get going. And, you know, it, we may not go back to those things because mm -hmm. they're kind of tedious it's not as fun to go back and be like, I need to organize these yes. things <laughs> instead of organizing them from the jump. So yes. it's, yeah, it's one of those unsexy, tedious things, but really will have an impact on having that time freedom mm -hmm. aspect as well. I think a lot of people think the time freedom comes with like that making more money brings time freedom, mm -hmm. or if they don't have time freedom in their business, that's a time management issue. And oftentimes it can be like organ organizational, like operational piece. It can also be a marketing issue. Like what is your marketing um, system look like? Do you even have a system or are you just chasing clients and throwing spaghetti at the wall? Mm -hmm. So true. So true. I find to um, in this space talking about automation, as you mentioned, you can get you you're in the grind, you're working constantly in your business and you do feel sometimes like oh my gosh i know that i need certain systems in place i know i need you know some automation perhaps set up but it's that moment of taking the time to do that and some entrepreneurs can feel like well i don't have time to pause and to stop and to do those things yeah. and often those are the very things that we need in order to have more time freedom and especially efficiency. Um, and I was also say too, especially on the back end of our business as well. Yeah. 
And also too, with automation and sales funnels specifically, there are these myths that we hear, of course, um, you can automatically hear, okay, I'm going to put in place the sales funnel. I'm going to be able to set it and forget it. You know, this is going to be so easy. But you mm -hmm. mentioned at the start of your journey too, and seeing that gap and that need for strategy. So let's talk a bit about the strategy that's needed to actually create a sales funnel. So where would someone start? They, yeah. they know that they want to set up a funnel, but where do they start? Is it starting at, um, you know, working on their offer and looking at that process and what will be the components? Where would you suggest someone starts in, in order to set this sales funnel up? Yeah, I think that's a really great question. And um, as you were talking, there were a couple of other, I think, points that that you hit on about like how we get into sort of, I think the hamster wheel of like, like we got to get more clients, we got to get more clients. And, um, and also like sort of the myth or misconception that like you set it up and you forget about it and it's done. And, um, you know, what I was thinking is like, it's kind of like an evergreen sales funnel is getting, well, prying yourself off the hamster wheel chasing clients is, is challenging. <laughs> it's, it's difficult. We just going to say that. Um, but you kind you need those active income generating activities mm -hmm. and the passive income generating activities. And so I think a lot of people think, oh, once I set up this evergreen sales funnel, I don't need to ever do those active income generating activities, but you still need to do them. It's sort of, you know, it's the analogy of like offense and defense in sports. It's like, mm -hmm. you need both in order to win the game. You need both. You can't, can't be scoring a bunch of points and then not, you know, playing defense. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of what the automation piece is like, it, it allows you to be going out there and doing those active activities and still have a system on the back end That's also getting leads and also bringing people in. And also it's like bolstering the active activities that you're doing. Um, as well as giving you a way to, to, as you're doing all this visibility and awareness work, mm -hmm. to send them to something. So it supports you in having that um, that time freedom. But it doesn't mean that it's going to be totally hands off forever. I mean, you'll dial it in, but things are always going to change and evolve. And so you'll always kind of be playing with it to some degree. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the heavy lifting comes in the beginning of getting it set up. Um, and so in terms of like, where do you get started when you're like, okay, well, I need a sales funnel. How do I get started? And it really, where you start kind of depends on where you're at in your business and what you have, mm -hmm. um, going on. But one thing to keep in mind is no matter each offer you have sort of needs a sales funnel. It needs a marketing system. It needs a marketing campaign around it if you want to sell that thing. So that's why it's really easy to just get started with like, just focus on one thing. Um, even if you just focus on one thing per quarter, that's, you know, a fine um, strategy as well. Um, so you'll want to pick one offer that you want to start with, or you can think of it as to, you know, if, if you're still like sort of working with people in a custom way, your offers don't feel totally solidified. It could be that you're, you're funneling people to a sales call or to a free mm -hmm. session with you or something like that. So you just want to start with what you do know and what you do have. So start with what you know about your offers and who you are as a business owner and what your process has looked like thus far. Um, start with who you, who, who your ideal audience, ideal clients are, your target audience, start with them and understanding who they are. What is the messaging that you need to create for them? Um, those are some good places, you know, to start in terms of just starting with like what, you know, and kind of working your way backwards through the parts that you might not know. But when we work with people, I have a system. So we start with the strategy. So we have a strategy session. We figure we pretty much lay the ground flat so we can figure out um, what, you know, what is this offer? What's the price point? Who's the target audience? Because that's going to impact the tactics that you're going to use. Then we move into the creative and content components of it, of um, like, what is the messaging? Because the messaging is so important um, to attracting people, but also getting things to convert. And then as well as like some of that design element in terms of like, we want to make sure that the pages are laid out in a way that's not only visually appealing, because yes, that adds credibility, but most importantly, what is user friendly in terms of user interaction? So. Um, thinking about like where are buttons, buttons above the scroll, um, the correct, you know, thinking about our CTAs, 
Um, and then you get into automating and scaling, uh, automating and like the building piece of it. So it's like once you get your strategy down, once you get your messaging, then you can actually get into the automation piece of like, OK, what are the tech tools we're using? How are we going to make all these steps flow together? Um, and then you launch it, you let it run and you see how it's performing. Then you start to evaluate and say, OK, here's where I can optimize this. Here's where I think I can make this conversion rate better. Or, you know, maybe this thing isn't converting. And most recently, this this happened to me. I, I created a webinar. I ran paid traffic to it. Um, ads were converting. The <laughs> webinar was not converting. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be a hard pill to swallow, especially when you build sales funnels. <laughs> yeah. But it's so <laughs> When you look at the, when you have the data to look at and you know that you've gotten it in front of enough people to say like, okay, this data is legitimate. And now I can make some real decisions around how I'm going to fix this, how I'm going to optimize this instead of just sort of guessing. Um, so that's the process when we work with clients in like a fully supported way. That's the process that we take. Um, <clears throat> but if you were doing this on your own, you can still take that, you know, similar process as well and start with your strategy, work on to the content, the messaging, then you start to build it, launch it and evaluate it. That's really good. I wanted one thing that you brought up and that I like made a little note of here two in two spaces i was thinking about okay for someone who is saying they want to create a sales funnel i think a question would pop up how long is this going to take me first to do it and then how long is it going to take for me to get results so let's dot let's like look a little bit into how long should someone um think about or how long should the process take for them to get all to get their funnel all set up. So let's answer that first. How long yeah. first? <laughs> <laughs> so that depends. So it, it's, you know, I've had client, I mean, it, it depends on, on how we're working with, with people and it depends on like how you're doing it. So if you're DIYing it, that could take a very long time. Mm -hmm. I even me DIYing my own because I, and I want to just share this. Um, it DIYing my own, even though I know, sales funnel strategy. I know the sales funnel tech, um, even getting some help with some of the pieces, like even that, the overthinking just makes it take so much longer because I get sit down and get a sales page together in a day for someone else. I can't do that for myself. I just can't. For whatever reason, I can't. And I'm like, what is wrong? I'm like, what is wrong with me? Nothing. But that is <laughs> exactly, yeah. that is the reality when we're doing it ourselves. Like that time frame, it depends on how quickly can you work through the mental mind stuff that's going on in your head. So there's that. Um, when you're working with us and you're getting supported, we certainly create a time frame around it. Some of it depends on, you know, you know how quickly can we get feedback. Um, but it's usually like a depending on, on the on the level of support could be a six week process. If we're only doing the tech, that could be as little as like two weeks to do the tech. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on like how much of the content creation and, and those things that we're that we're could be supporting on that may need feedback from the client. Um, but it can be, you know, if it's just the tech, you're just like, I got everything set up. I got my pages. I just need you to do the technical integrations. That's really short. Um, but for the longer piece, it's usually we try to do six to eight weeks mm -hmm. um, to get it done because we want to make sure that it's perfect. We want to make sure that it's as near perfect as as it can be um, and make really intentional decisions um, around you know, what we're doing. And, and even so, you know, having a, if we are able to have a chance to optimize it as well. And so uh, that was a really great question, too, about what well, once it's built, how long does it take to see results? So that question is really tricky to answer because I can't guarantee um, how quickly you'll start to see results. But <clears throat> you want to start, I mean, the first 30 days, that's when you're going to start to gain insight and, and, and knowledge and data around it to figure out, okay, what's working, what's not working. When it first launches, uh, you're going to be looking at your analytics a little more closely so you can dial things in more quickly, especially if you're using paid traffic. Um, the other thing too, like with organic traffic, it really depends, like, are you getting enough eyes in front of it? 
Um, so I'm at the point where I'm still figuring this piece out about what my recommendation is going to be or what my recommendation is around paid traffic. I personally think paid traffic is, um, I think it's essential now, <laughs> unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it does help speed up getting that data and that insight to be like, okay, I know that this, like for me, I think the ads are running for like maybe two or three weeks and I kept looking at everything. And then I looked at how the video was performing. So you want to make sure that you're looking at, at the right analytics metrics. Um, and I could see that there was a big drop off and I was like, okay, so that means I need to change something in this because people aren't even getting to, there's too much drop off before even the end of the video. Um, so it really is about just how much data are you getting and, and, and making those changes. So I would say the first 30 days are pretty essential to letting it run, to checking, to optimizing and tweaking it. Um, and then, you know, from there, you'll, you should start to see some, um, you know, some conversions. I mean, you should really should see some conversions from the minute you launch it. If you're not, then you need to go back and optimize it. Um, it also depends on like what it is that you're selling. So like if this is a $16,000 offer, $10,000, $5,000 offer, what does your sales cycle look like for that? So someone has to enter the auto, uh, enter the sales funnel, then they, how long is it going to take them to get to that sales call with you? And like, do they make it to the sales call with you? So some of, some of, some of the timing around that does depend on like what your sales process, like the length of your sales process is or the, the timeline for that. Um, but, you know, 30 days is a good sort of run to get some really good data. But again, like I said, when things aren't, you know, things aren't converting um, initially, you know, that's when you, you want to start to make those changes. That's really good. Um, and what I heard over and over was data, um, and having the right metrics. So definitely, I think knowing what your goals are. Um, also, too, you mentioned um, the sales cycle of that one offer that you mentioned. How long does it take to actually go through that cycle? So I think there are a lot of um, uh, components to determining what your results will look like or results may vary from person to person. But I think that the main thing that you pointed out, Sharice, was that 30 days and having that data, having those insights to make intentional um, and strategic action to as to what may need to be tweaked and, mm -hmm. and where to be able to see where um, you may need to make those tweaks to. I think that's um, definitely some power behind um, having paid traffic um, with the funnel. Mm -hmm. and, but you talk about that a little bit in terms of investment when it comes to putting money behind an offer, um, maybe an idea of where's a good place to start, maybe in, in that first 30 days yeah. um, in terms of like, let's talk a little bit about budget. Yeah, I think, ooh, I think we don't really hear a lot of people talk about like having a marketing budget. And I think a lot of us think that like we should just be getting leads for free. And it's like, actually, you know, most, no. <laughs> <laughs> Leads aren't necessarily free. They're going to cost you either time or money. And so um, when it comes to pay traffic, um, it really in determining whether it's right for you really depends on like what what is your audience size and niche look like? Like, do you, are you good at like getting a, getting visible, getting followers? Some people are just naturally great at like producing content and they're in a niche where there's not a ton of competition. And mm -hmm. so they're growing their Instagram account like this and that, and like, you know, a few different um, guest appearances in front of larger audiences and like they're exploding their accounts and they're getting enough traffic for accounts like you and I who are in a very competitive space. <laughs> um, and we may have a smaller, but warmer audience. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it still can be challenging to get enough traffic and get like more new people into our, our realm, just relying on organic because the organic reach just, it, it just isn't what it was in 2014. Um, you know, and ever since ads came around, it just, it just, and with the algorithm, it just seems like what is happening <laughs> with this check mark <laughs> verification thing? It's like, I know. <laughs> it, it's just, it's always changing, which is another point as to why it's important to have this sort of sales funnel. But having, you know, having a sales funnel really means to also have like an email marketing 
component to your to your business and to your marketing that I think is going to be more reliable and should stand the test of time. But we'll see what happens because tech is always um, changing. But email marketing has been pretty consistent over the last, I would say, I, a decade or more, really. And I was going to say like 20 years, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to go back that far. <laughs> Um, because it was, you know, back then too, it was still new. Right. And so we've mm -hmm. seen it evolve, but for the most part, it sort of evolved and now it's pretty been, it's pretty much been consistent. And really there's no algorithm to keep you from the inbox other than getting into the spam folder, right. Versus, you know, Instagram, you're competing for these views and building up an audience that you don't own. Whereas your email list, those contacts, you own them. Those are your leads and, and you have them. And so when you think about it that way, um, like the fact that people sell, like you could go and buy an email list. I don't recommend necessarily doing that. Um, leads, <laughs> contact information isn't free. Leads aren't free. And so I think having a budget that feels comfortable for you for investing in your marketing, um, is I think it's wise and I think it's sort of that difference between it's like one of those differences between like treating your business more like you're freelancing to like okay I'm stepping into like being a business and we're going to have a marketing budget um in terms of how much you should budget I think depends also like some of that depends on lead cost um I don't want to scare people with, you know, any numbers, but, you know, having $500 to $1,000 to spend um, on your on your marketing and advertising, I think is a good place to to aim for, mm -hmm. um, especially if you have higher end offers, um, especially if you're selling something that's 5K or 10K. Um, and that's the other thing too, like a higher end 10 K offer that sales process or $16,000 offer for that matter, that sales process is going to probably look a lot longer. Um, and you're going to have fewer people who are going to be saying yes to that. So, um, you know, that might be a sales call that yet hopefully, you know, ideally converts, but maybe they, they don't convert that first time and you follow up with them like a month later to see how they're doing or 60 days later, maybe they come back around to you when it's just right for them. So, um, you know, I think that's all has happened to us where we've had a sales call with someone that didn't work out and, but we kick, you know, uh, made a connection and then they come back to us. So um, sales processes, there's so many variables in it that, um, you know, what your sales process looks like um, also again, can, can factor into, into, into all of this as well. So, um, but I, th I think, you know, even if you can't start with, you know, a $500, um, even just working your way up to like being able to set that aside um, and saying, and just having that mindset of like, I'm setting aside money to invest into marketing into being able to, um, you know, get more visibility, get more traffic, um, and also, too, like in terms of like how much it costs to, to get this traffic, um, if you're doing it yourself, that's one thing versus like, are you paying, you know, a, mar um, a Facebook ad strategist to do it? Right. So a Facebook ad strategist is going to get you better, better lead costs. Um, ideally, that that's that's what they're going to work towards getting you better lead costs. But you want to also consider like, OK, you're paying for your leads, but you're also going to have to pay for that Facebook ad strategist as well. So. Um, I'm not running my own ads. I have a Facebook ad strategist and, um, I'm so glad that I made that investment <laughs> because, um, yeah, I don't want to be running my own ads. It's scary. It's scary to just see the money <laughs> being spent at times and being like, especially on, on a funnel where something like wasn't converting too, right? So you have to be willing to sort of experiment and know that not every experimentation is going to be a hit, but right now, okay, I like I have to go back to that funnel and rework the the video. But the um, my PDF that that those ads are working really well, and mm -hmm. my lead cost is like a fraction of what it was for the webinar. So my lead cost for the PDF, I think, right now, one of them was like as low as a dollar sixty six, whereas for the webinar. Um, 
it was as high as like $27. We got it down to 15. And right now I can tell you across the board because I've also been behind the scenes of some other um, businesses that are also target. So like if you're in the business of targeting other businesses, so anyone who's targeting uh, people who want like coaches, um, add they're they've been fluctuating but they have some lead costs have been as high as like forty dollars per lead per lead mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have to and then you think about well how many <laughs> leads do you need to have to have a conversion too and so that's where things can get really expensive so but <laughs> and i know i'm like saying all this i'm probably like like fire hosing your audience with too much information. I think it's helpful though. I think it's helpful. Okay. A different um, status. Yeah. It I mean, I think it goes to show that like at like it's there are variables that you won't be able to account for. Um and you know, depending on your audience, right? Like the business to business audience, those leads are going to cost more. But for um different audiences, you can get leads probably for a dollar or less. Um so really, you know, it really depends. And so I think having a conversation, like if it's something that you're starting to get interested in, you know, finding a trusted resource to to talk to about Facebook ads and, and getting an idea of what it would look like for you and your business in terms of like lead cost um, could be incredibly helpful just to sort of have um, some numbers to think about for like a budget. But also, you know, there are some, the other advantage to having a Facebook ad strategist is that there are um, some other, I don't want to say tricks per se, but there are some other tactics. So you can run traffic ads. Those are usually pretty inexpensive. Um, and that could just be, and you can do that just like to be like, okay, I just want to test this messaging. I just want to test mm -hmm. to see if this is working, like do some traffic ads to see if, you know, if people are clicking, if people are resonating with this. Um, and that, and that doesn't have to be expensive or super fancy either, but that's, I think that's one of the benefits to, to working with like a Facebook ad strategist is that they can help you, um, with your budget, make the most of it and get the most bang for, for your dollar. Um, but before you even get to the Facebook ad strategist, you gotta have the funnel set up, <laughs> which yes. is oftentimes what, what happens. I, and Facebook ad strategists are great referrals for me because, um, once, you know, a lot of times people are like, okay, like I want to run ads to this thing. And then they start reviewing, you know, the, the sales page or the website and like this link's broken, that link's broken. And mm -hmm. trust me, it happened to me as well. <laughs> um, cause we just have stuff on our site and we, maybe we forget about it. Um, but you just want to make sure your funnel is tight, that it's solid, that the links work, things are sending when they're supposed to send. Um, if you can test your funnel first with organic traffic, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, just so that you're not spending you know, additional money to sort of test things out. But if you have to, I think that's just sort of like the cost of doing business these days. And I think particularly we may be a little bit spoiled to, to the days of when, you know, Instagram didn't have ads and you could just <laughs> post and it was, you know, based on timing, you know, it just was like, oh, I just have to post at the right time. <laughs> Yeah, Chronic, the chronological order feed. So <laughs> yeah, so long or the long gone are those days. But um, yeah, I I don't know. I think I think that the challenge in this space is that a lot of people try to position whatever it is that they're selling as like this is the solution. You need Facebook ads or you need a funnel, right? Instead of thinking about, I think the bigger picture is like. You know, how do these pieces fit into your business to get yeah. you to where your goals are and what pieces of that you're missing? Because some people, they're not missing the traffic piece. They have mm -hmm. plenty of organic traffic. So that's fine. What they're missing is the sales funnel. They don't have a sales system. So they're doing everything very manually and they've got all this attention. But like there takes so much time for them to, you know, turn that traffic and that audience into paying customers. And they're maybe losing out on customers because they don't have that piece. Um, and then um, for some people, it's like they have the, the, the traffic, they have the, the system, but they don't have the offer and the offer needs more dialing in. Um, most of the time though, I will say when I do work with people, it's usually they're missing two components. Not, it's not usually just one. Um, usually they're missing two because I think in order to have the traffic, um, I mean, in order to dial in the offer, you kind of need to have validated it thus you need somewhat of an audience um to get there and oftentimes the sales funnel is that middle 
piece, that piece in the middle that's not bridging the gap for most people. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm just, I hope I'm not, I'm, I hope that answered the question. <laughs> I feel this has been great. I also feel that you've hit hit areas along this journey. So it's meeting someone who is maybe in that beginning stage. I'm just thinking about it. Uh, maybe they are feeling that they have a missing piece and trying to determine what that is. Mm -hmm. And then I think you've hit people that are along that journey as well. Maybe they do have a funnel in place. Maybe it's looking at some of those metrics to see, you know, what is missing in that regard. So I think you've hit some, you have, you've hit some really, really good points here. And I want you to share too, maybe you have like one overarching um, point that you want to share um, when it comes to especially focusing on that burnout side and avoiding burnout. Um, so making that connection to maybe like one last point you want to share um, with everyone too. Yeah. I feel like if there's one thing you can walk away from today, um, interview or conversation that we're having here <laughs> is that um, those tedious, unsexy pieces of organizing your business and putting processes in place and automating like those three things, those three components are really going to help um, help you avoid the, the burnout side and actually can help you increase your income because now your your business is running more efficiently. Um, you're not spending as much time maybe in the sales process. You're able to hand off things. So it just allows you to grow. Um, those are the things that just like when we're on that hamster wheel, it's really hard to pry ourselves off and say, okay, like this is a priority. I need to get this done. Um, and so if there's one thing I want to say is like uh, one action even that you can take is to go and like evaluate what your process looks like right now. Find, you know, try to find the gaps and where you can where things can be more organized, where things can be more streamlined. Um, you know, what things can you automate? Because oftentimes a lot of people come to me, they have great tools in their business, but they're not really using the automation piece of it. <laughs> and they're still like sending out reminder emails for like client appointments. And it's like, well, Calendly can send out the reminders, you know, yes. <laughs> so just making sure that, you know, go, going through your process and just seeing like, okay, where can I make this faster, easier, automated if possible? That feels really good. Just hearing you say that it sounds incredibly calming and it feels <laughs> spacious. It feels really good. I'll even share like something super simple, finding your keys. Like, do you misplace your keys? I am always putting my keys in a different spot. And I said, you know what? I wanted to get a little bowl to sit beside the door. Haven't bought the bowl, but I have an <laughs> empty plant stand. So I decided to put the plant stand beside the door with my keys. And it feels so much easier <laughs> every day. I don't have to, you know, search for my keys. They're in the little plant stand sitting and waiting for me. And to hear you describing um, just taking that one action, doing that evaluation, it felt so good because the end result is that space to breathe and mm -hmm. your mind is free to think about more important things than looking for your keys or sending mm -hmm. out that email. So yeah. I think that was, that was, that was helpful. I love I, that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, but I think that's such a great, um, like everyday example. And I mean, and also like you could be applying this to like your personal life as well. What can you automate in your personal life? Can you automate bill pay, you know, like that's one of those things where I've always been nervous <laughs> to, um, to use. But ever since I started setting that up, I'm like, wow, I spend so much less time having to like, go through the mail and then collect it all and then sit at the computer and like pay everything when it's like, okay, I know I can open it, it's paid, I can shred it. You know, it's like those little things like putting your keys in a dish. I do that too. Now I have a spot by my door because otherwise and if they're not there then oh my god I don't know where they are <laughs> you're in trouble <laughs> yeah I'm in trouble that's why I'm like I have to get one of those um those Apple air tags I think and apply mm. them put that on my keys 
Okay, I may need to do that. But for now, I'm going to rely <laughs> on my newfound efficiency of this plant standing yes. by the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, before we wrap up today, Sharice, I want to run through a rapid fire of questions. We've done this before. I didn't mention to you guys that when I had my old Facebook group that Sharice was a guest inside. So this is a second time that I'm having this um, experience with her. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this conversation, this interview, this deep dive into Sharice's zone of genius today, um, because she is an incredible an incredible woman. She's fabulous at what she does. But I just wanted to mention this is um, a treat to spend some time with her today. And we're going to dive into these questions. Are you ready, Sharice? Yes. All right. So first up, you want to share a fun fact about the woman behind the brand? A fun fact. Um, a fun, well, I I bowl. I'm a bowler. <laughs> I know it's a, it's a sport that's not that popular these days anymore, but I've been bowling since I was five and I was captain of the bowl, of my high school bowling team. Oh my goodness. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. That is a fun, fun fact. All right. Best piece of business advice you've ever received. Oh, wow. I've probably received so much, but I would say most recently, this was around niching down. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just like, you know, focus on that, uh, focus on like your 10%, right? Your ideal client and the rest will come, right? Because people who aren't necessarily most ideal, they're still going to come to you. So really just commit to focusing on who your niche are and other people are going to come. That's like, don't worry about trying to serve everyone. <laughs> mm, really good. Really good. How about, let's see, we always talk about books when we do catch up. So a favorite book or a book that you'd like to recommend? Yeah. Does it have to be business related? I was looking at my, at my list over here because I really, so like a fun book. I really liked Finding Me by Viola Davis. I thought that was a really good book. But in terms of like, productivity, somewhat business related. I really enjoyed John Acoff's finish because I'm notorious for starting things and not finishing them. And so that was really good, um, really good book and some really good strategies on how to follow through on, on your ideas. <laughs> All right. I'm writing down. I hadn't heard of finish. I'm going to check that out. Oh, he's got a whole series. I haven't uh, read the other ones yet. I started with finish because I was like, that's where I need help. I don't need, I don't need help with starting anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Meeting you where you are, right? Love yeah. that. How about, oh, best vacation. Let's dream a little bit. Or the best vacation you've had. The best vacation I had um, was when we went to, um, when we went to Europe, we went to a few different countries. We really enjoyed Spain. Um, so that was like the most, that was, oh, wow. Quite a quite a while ago now, um, but that was I think the best vacation that we've we've had. It was like felt like my first adult vacation. Oddly mm -hmm. enough, <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. And how about the last question? Uh, your next vacation spot, something you're looking forward to? Mm -hmm. I've been looking at. I'm like I want to go on a very bougie vacation. I want to okay. go on a resort vacation. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been looking at the Bahamas, and I've been looking specifically at the Grand Hyatt. Bahamar Resort because um, it just looks fabulous. So that's it like sounds bougie. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like they've got an aquarium like in the swimming pool area. Like you can swim up to the aquarium, and it just it sounds fun and like opulent. And I'm like, this is mm -hmm. this is the year of treat ourselves. So that's like on the the vision board of like, I want to get that booked. And even if it doesn't happen this year, I want to get it booked this year so that it can happen. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've just been dreaming about vacations because, you know, that's that's when you start to create time freedom in your business, as I'm doing for myself as well, um, you have more space to think about those things. And like, they feel like real, that they can happen. So I love it. I am here for it. I'm cheering for you. And I cannot wait to see photos from when you have this amazing time in the Bahamas. So, hey, I'm going to be waiting to see it all because I know it's going to happen. 
Yes. Well, speaking it into existence. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, Sharice, I want to say thank you again so much for coming on the channel today and sharing your knowledge with us. And will you let us know where we can find you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Sharice and Co. That's my handle. And you can also find me at shariceandco.com. That's my website. So if you wanted to go grab that um, lead magnet that I mentioned, it is the um, ultimate sales funnel blueprint. So it's a step-by-step -step guide. It's 25 pages long. It's detailed on like how to build um, your evergreen sales funnel. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can go to shariceandco.com. It's right there on the homepage and you can grab that as well. And yeah, I really enjoy connecting with people on Instagram. So don't don't be shy and, you know, feel free to come follow me over there and, and shoot me a DM. Thank you so much. And for everyone, I'm going to leave all of Sharice's information in the description below for you. And once again, I want to say thank you so much for coming on. And I hope that you guys got a lot of value out of today's interview talk, our time together. Leave us some comments below. Leave Cherie some love in the comments below and also go and follow her on Instagram. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.